Now let's move on to the trim. A wide selection of Hardy trim products is available. They have the widths to cover almost any application and come in various textures. Check with your local dealer to find out what is available in your area. Let's first take a look at how to install Hardy Trim XLD. It cuts, fastens, and finishes as easily as wood. In most cases, you should install XLD trim first and butt the siding to the trim. This is called an Abut 2 application. Hardy Trim XLD must be attached to wood studs, though you may nail through other James Hardy siding products. At least three quarters of an inch of the nail must enter the framing. While XLD trim can be attached using six penny or eight penny siding nails, you can also use finishing nails. This feature is completely unique to XLD. Using finishing nails offers a seamless appearance without the visibility of nail heads. When fastening Hardy Trim XLD, space nails across the width of the board no more than 16 inches on center. Keep fasteners three quarters of an inch back from all edges and three quarters of an inch from the ends. Fasteners can be slightly countersunk to create a seamless application. When butting Hardy Plank to XLD, leave a minimum 1 8 inch gap as a buffer for any movement in the wood framed wall. To maximize the performance of your vertical trim seams, make 22 and a half to 45 degree weather cuts before fastening. Hardy Trim XLD must also be installed with a minimum 6 inch clearance to the finished earth on the exterior of the building and a minimum 2 inch clearance between roofs, decks, paths, steps and driveways. As with all James Hardy products, XLD trim should never be installed such that it may remain in contact with standing water. For fascia applications, James Hardy requires XLD trim to be installed over a wood 2 by subfascia. As you have just seen, the Abut 2 application is used when installing XLD trim. While Hardy trim HLD is not as thick as XLD, it can also be used in an Abut 2 application. However, a common application for HLD and 7 16th inch Hardy trim is the cap over method. In this application, siding is installed first and then trim boards are fastened over the siding. Fasten the trim by nailing through the trim and underlying siding into a stud. Nails must penetrate a minimum of three quarters of an inch into the sheathing and into the underlying stud. Nails should be positioned no closer than three quarters of an inch from the edge of the trim board and one inch from the board's end with maximum spacing between nails at 16 inches. Both HLD and 7 16th inch trim require full headed fasteners to apply trim to wood frame walls. Secure the trim, positioning the nails to go through laps in the siding. Do not place nails in between the lap joints or in between overlapping planks. Always make sure to take the trim thickness into account when joining the two pieces of trim on outside corners. Since one edge overlaps the other, you'll have to increase the nailing distance from the edge of the hardy trim board to ensure that the nail is anchored in the stud, not the other hardy trim piece. Installation of inside and outside corners is a very simple process. After the siding has been applied, trim boards are cut to size and installed over siding. Remember to place your fasteners so they go through the laps in the siding. For trimming doors and windows, follow the same procedure, remembering to leave a 1 8 inch gap between the siding and doors and windows. HLD and 7 16 inch boards can also be used as rakes and fascias. James Hardy recommends a 2 by sub fascia to provide support for ladders leaned against the fascia and for anchoring gutters. For trim over siding, caulking is optional. James Hardy recommends a high-quality paintable latex caulk that complies with ASTM C-834 and ASTM C-920. The caulking should be done according to the caulk manufacturer's written application instructions.